Good day, this is Michelle Rasmus. I am the Math Lecturer at the Department of Mathematical and Physical Sciences at the Central University of Technology, which is in Bloemfontein, which is in the Free State, which is in the center of South Africa. I will be presenting on behalf of myself and my co-author, uh, Professor Teron. We are reporting on MATLAB LiveScript and its application in civil engineering education. Why MATLAB LiveScript? MATLAB LiveScript platform is an alternative to the command window and presents a way forward for engineering mathematics presentation as it combines MATLAB code with formatted text, equation editor, and images in a single interactive script environment suited to the use of a first-time coder. The usual MATLAB platform, the command window, is not as suited to first-time users and involves the writing of an M code and other aspects. So the live script is a very easy platform conducive to the first-time user. What happened before and during lockdown? MATLAB interaction entailed classroom bounded demonstrations in the command window, which was now before LiveScript, and this cannot be saved. Although a savable M script can be executed in the command window, this form of instruction would have required more coding know-how. And would, this was not possible on account of the venue and time constraints as it was included in the maths subject and the time was used for theory, etc. With lockdown, all subject material was delivered online, which excluded MATLAB use, and all calculations were restricted to those that can be performed on paper. Technical content in civil engineering, such as the calculation of deflection under variable weight distribution and the calculation of hydraulic head and groundwater flow, was truncated to problems which students can solve on paper and did not really represent realistic situations. What happened after lockdown? Lockdown inspired exploring alternative ways to deliver high quality subject content, both on campus as well as online. As the Central University of Technology is in possession of a MATLAB campus license, all civil engineering students have access to the software and they can access it from any computer with an internet connection. So MATLAB is available online. Students can also download it to their um, devices, but as it is a very uh, large folder or a very large software um, component, it takes up a lot of space and not all students have devices that can carry that type of memory. The LiveScript app within the MATLAB software made the transition to an interactive manual possible, which enables students to self-teach theory and application with the necessary coding to solve more realistic but complicated problems from anywhere. The online LiveScript manual is subdivided into chapters containing course content, which students access by logging into their MathWorks account and opening the script chapters, which they have downloaded from their student Blackboard platform. The chapters initiate with theory content, derivation of formulas and demonstrate these through examples, which are hand calculated in the text mode area, as is the case with a formal textbook. So the students experiences the textbook environment. The text area flows into the coding area where the same manual calculations are executed in MATLAB code. So students can see how to calculate these e uh, equations. Students can interact by changing the variable in the code to solve similar problems and can experiment with variables required to achieve a desired outcome. Students are required to perform health calculations during assessments and more such problems are included in the script files where students can compare their output with the code output. So they can still do the hand calculations. They can then code the problem and see if the output of the script is comparable to their own solutions. If it's not, then they can always go and have a look and see where they might have made a mistake or they can have a look at the code. So it's a learning process both ways. Real world engineering problems, however, are mostly unsuited to hand calculations on account of the cumbersome time consuming calculations they entail, and they do require a coding intervention. This is where the interactive platform reaches its goal as classroom calculations flow into real world calculations without loss of the necessary theory. 
The following example demonstrates exactly this. They do the beam equation. Now we also have the well, uh, uh, the well problem, but we will only do the beam equation in this presentation. Calculating deflection under an uneven weight distribution requires solving a fourth order differential equation using the Laplace transform. Typically for a sim simply supported beam of length 7.5 meters with a sandbag load distribution shown in this figure, the differential equation is given by the expression that you see down here, right? It's quite a complicated expression. It looks quite wild. But all this theory was explained in the same notes uh, that you will see on the next page. So the complete theory is there, worked out examples is there. So by the time they reach the example, they already know what the fourth derivative is. They already know what EI is. EI just represents the material this beam is made up of. Is it steel? Is it wood? And of course, the shape of this um, beam. Is it rectangular, solid? Is it, whole, is it hollow? Or is it an I-beam? All these have relevance on how this beam will deflect. And all this theory is built into the, to the, um, the parts preceding this example in the live script. Um, script. Now, realistically, there would be the three weights that you see over here. They, of course, are also introduced to the heavy side function, which is a modeling uh, function that will that is used to show where something starts and stops. It's a starter and a stopper. If, for instance, says the first weight starts at zero and ends at three, which you can see here on the right hand side of 1.5 kilonewton. The next weight starts at three and ends at six. Etc. So all these modeling aspects students are taught in the um, text beforehand. We, you are also given boundary conditions, which will depend on how this beam is affixed at the ends. As it is simply supported, it has the structure down here, which is also explained in the text that precedes this section. Um, yeah, in the next page. The time hand calculations required to solve this equation, if you now use a plus from solve this equation, is unsuited to classroom environment and assessments, etc. And you would ideally just truncate it to the inclusion of only one weight on this beam. For instance, you would say, let's just truncate it and put on W1, just the first weight. Leave the other two out for now. Boundary conditions remain the same as the situation remains the same otherwise. This is what students see when they download the LiveScript.mlx file from their Blackboard platform and they now access it through the MATLAB online um, software uh, app. This is what they see. MATLAB has a ribbon and in the top ribbon you can see how you can toggle between text and code all the other things that they can do that the text has an equation editor but when they open it the full theory will already have been executed in the text mode so they can just read through the theory they can have a look at the examples etc and as they go down with a script it runs into problem calculation where that where the the um, explanations step by step tell them take them through all the steps of how the plus transform in this case would be used to solve this beam equation if you only included w1 it is then naturally followed by the code mode which is part of this script so it naturally flows from text to code where it now executes the code in solving this beam deflection equation. The other aspect that they are shown or is included in the theory beforehand is that a beam, depending on what it's made up of, has a maximum deflection allowed before its integrity is compromised. And this is defined by the length of the beam divided by 250, depending on what the beam is made up of. The uh, 250, I think, is related to steel. And then there's another factor for wood, etc. Also shows how to physically or graphically represent the deflection so that when they execute the code, they can see with regards to the integrity compromise maximum, where is this beam going to deflect to? When they run it with just the first weight on it, just W1 on it, they will see right. The deflection is inside the integrity bounds. Here where the red asterisk is, is where it shows where the integrity would have been compromised. So it is well within limits. Now this would usually be the end for the student in this um, exercise. He would now move on to solving other problems. But because it is MATLAB code that you can interact with, the student can now see, write, 
I can keep exactly the same format of the code, but, and I saw how W1 was entered, so entering W2 and W3, all three weights that's on that beam is now an easy task, and you just add them to the differential equation expression. Everything else remains the same, and when the student now runs this code, you will see how it changes matters. Now, the deflection has exceeded the integrity um, the, uh, the distance that that it will compromise the integrity of this beam. This beam will probably uh, suffer breakage. So this makes it a bit more realistic. They can also go back to the code. They can change aspects. They can change the material, the EI factor in the beginning of the differential equation. They can see how will a different type of beam react under the same conditions. So this makes it very um, intuitive. The students get a better understanding of what they are doing and what this Laplace transform does. Conclusion, coding civil engineering mathematics contents as a live script manual enhances learning. Students also acquire a useful coding skill in addition to learning theoretical and practical content, so it's a two and one. The beam deflection example shows how mathematics theory is maintained while the student experiences with real world simulations, which leads to a more comprehensive understanding of content. It must also be stated that the script chapters are conducive to self-learning to a large extent should there be another lockdown event as it takes you through the paces and everything is available. The student needs to just open the script. The text is there, the, the theory is there, examples are there, the code is there. It's not, um, it doesn't, it's not more work to go and access an alternative platform to perform the calculations, etc. With LiveScript, even mathematics contents can be served as an application subject. Before this, mathematics was very much perceived as a standalone subject, uh, as the content would only extend, un well, it will only be, uh, it will be more theoretical based. So the concept will be explained and the concept will be tested, not so much its practical application in the engineering field. And the other thing that's quite useful is that these scripts can be saved to or exported to either a Word or a PDF document for offline use. So if a student does still prefer to have this as a printed version, he can download it as a Word file or a PDF or directly to a PDF, and he can have himself a copy printed. So you don't always need internet access except for the coding bits, of course, but otherwise you can have a hard copy. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, for From myself, Dr. Erasmus and Prof. Ron, um, I hope to see you again at a following conference.